choreograph the crowd. Those are not placards. In those different sections, they're wearing the different colors as you look down on a sold out Bronco Stadium. The weather is a story here tonight. 89 degrees at kickoff. Light breeze and clear, but it is warm for this September night in Boise, Idaho. Now, Mike Riley just won the coin toss and he will receive. He wants to go on the attack early in this game. And on the other side, a man who has never lost on the blue as a head coach. Chris Peterson, 26 and 0. So this crowd is all revved up. Pull up your favorite chair, get your favorite beverage, come on in and sit down and measure these Broncos. How good are they? California Ryan Katz. Yeah, Katz has a big arm, very mobile, great athlete, still kind of settling in, making his third career start, taking over for Sean Canfield this year at Oregon State. And Brent, I think there's so much upside. It's just a matter of him getting more and more reps and playing in these kind of atmospheres, atmospheres until he's able to settle down. But tonight, a big thing for him will be just trying to be able to make good decisions and not turn the football over, especially early in this game. There's the fly sweep motion, and going through is James. They're going to fire it to him on first down in the flat, and he picks up about three yards as we check out the Beaver offense here tonight. The skill players, Herbie's already talked about the Rogers brother. Now, they are not twins. James is a year older, and he's the senior. Keep an eye, though, on Jordan Bishop. He's a track star behind this offensive line. Michael Phillip will draw the start tonight at left tackle instead of Wilder McAndrews. And here we go with second down and seven. James goes out far to the right. Play fake. Fumble. Katz recovers it. Hit by Jamar Taylor on the corner blitz. Brent, what a great job of bringing the pressure here and sneaking right here. The one thing about Halahuna, he's a tight end. That's a tough block for him, especially with the speed of Taylor coming off the edge there. They had James Rogers one-on-one. -on -one. Katz held on to the ball just a little bit too long. And a great call by Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator by Boise there on the second down. Need 15. Katz can't find a man open, and he'll go down at the nine-yard line. That defensive front, Billy Wynn and Shea McClellan, two big-timers. Billy Wynn, number 90, is as good as any defensive lineman out in the West. Great indication of the speed of that front four, Brent. You talked about Billy Wynn, and it's really the entire group that we saw against Virginia Tech consistently getting pressure that night on Tyrod Taylor. They're off to a good start tonight here against Oregon State. So Johnny Hecker is a high school quarterback. He'll punt it. Titus Young, one of the dangerous wide receivers, is also a big-time return man, and he waits. On the sideline and out of bounds, but excellent field position for the Broncos with their first series. So winning the toss and electing to receive a gamble that did not pay off. And now the junior from Prosser, Washington, which is about 300 miles from Boise, Kellen Moore will bring the offense out. 28 and 1, 16 and 0 as far as playing in this stadium. What he can do, Grant, is he just brings that composure and an ability to tack downfield. Probably the area that this offense has improved the most from last year to this year. The window dressing on the formation. Shift the strength. 
Doug Martin, a hard running tailback, will start. And Kellen changes up. He'll drop back into the gun. And he'll put it up on first down. Throws in underneath. And stepping out for the first down is Tyler Shoemaker, a junior from nearby Meridian, Idaho. Keep talking about his composure, Brent, but really the decision making that goes along with his composure, the accuracy, making that check, as you said, seeing the coverage that he wanted, and knowing as he got the snap exactly where he wanted to go with the football by the time he received the snap from the center. DJ Harper, number six, checks in as a tailback. And play action from under center, and they throw back incomplete. They wanted Harper slipping out of the backfield. Let's take a look at this offense, and it is a dangerous one. These are the weapons. They will use three running backs, but two fine wide receivers from California, Pettis and Young. Tyler Shoemaker made a catch earlier. There's the offensive line. Their best, their five best offensive linemen, then they find places for them to play. Thomas Bird, they tell us, has done a great job as a center. Junior from California. Second and ten. Harper picks up the rush man. And there is Titus Young being knocked out of bounds as we take a look at the Beaver defense. Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator, and he knows what he's up against here tonight. Paya, number 54, could be an All-American defensive lineman. You want to keep an eye on him in the middle. These are the fellows who have to grow up here tonight. They have got to contain the outside. They didn't do a good job against TCU in that area. Playmaker back there is Lance Mitchell, junior from Pasadena. And now Doug Martin is back on third and three. He's a hard running back. Play fake. They're going to keep it in the air. Throw to him for the first down. You can see how hard he is to bring down and on their first possession. Boise State threatening. Right, you've talked a couple times about the window dressing and the pre-snap movement and then the play action. And I'll tell you what it does is it creates confusion. And that time, Brandon Harden, the corner, got caught up that time, keeping his eyes in the backfield. And that's what the coaches told us from Oregon State. The importance about having discipline and being able to read your keys and keep you in position to make plays. That time they lost uh, Martin coming out of the backfield. 16 yards to Martin. And Moore has thrown for 33. Stumbles coming back. Regains his balance. Fires in zone. Incomplete penalty. Pettis was fouled by James Dockery. Looks like Dockery's right arm came right over the top, just got a hold of the back of the jersey of Pettis. This is a whack officiating crew. Of course, this is the last year that Boise State will be playing in this conference. That's interference on the defense, number two. Automatic first down, the two yard line. First down. I think Dockery's saying that yeah, this is a pretty good play. Let's take a close look. This slant, something that Pettis likes to do. Dockery comes in there, and you can see the, actually the right hand, not just so much up on the shoulder, but on the right hip of Pettis, preventing him from being able to reach out there. He definitely pulled him back towards him, made a good hand with, made a good play with the left hand, but the right hand definitely pulled him in. Martin with a blocker in front of him. <laughs> Movement. I believe the lineman, Herbie, might have moved and that is Myers Brunel Myers both start offense number 65 64 first down that is a big error when you get down to this part of the field those false starts down there five yards might not seem Herbie it's right. like a lot to folks but it, it makes all the difference in the world for a play caller and a rare mistake from Chris Peterson's offense I mean typically they get down into this area and they're they're pretty dialed in and pretty fundamentally sound and Myers has been in and out of the lineup along with Matt Slater maybe a little anxious there early in the game at right tackle and here comes Martin and he is trapped Nowhere for Doug Martin on that play. So now you would expect Boise State to start putting it up down here. Yeah, they love play action throughout the whole field, but especially when they get down into the red zone, they get inside that 10-yard line. They start to look for their matchups that they like. Kellen Moore's success with play action very well seen here with the numbers. And make this, again, something they like in their trick to try to find that tight end. Instead, they give it to Martin. 
And his helmet comes off. A couple of the Beavers thought, hey, that's the football. But it was a helmet Gabe Miller is there defensively. And, then, you know, it's early in the game, Brent, but on the road with all this hype for both teams, kind of a big play coming up here on third down. Oregon State needs to find a reason to believe that they have a chance to win this game. You come up with a pretty good goal line stand here, force a field goal on the road, that can help your cause. This is big. Pettis is a key target down here. He's the taller of the race receivers. And Kellen's going to flip it to him, and he's going to throw on Andrew Long. Touchdown! And there is the trickeration. Tommy Gallarda, the tight end the receiving end as they bring Austin Pettis around and he throws a touchdown pass. Uh, he's lined up in the right side and Pettis Brent, as you said, gets so much attention for his ability to catch the ball, but he's a tremendous athlete. He's actually the holder for the field goals and the extra points. Does a very good job. As soon as he handled the football, he knew that he had his man, and he just floated it up into the corner for that touchdown. Bronsman taps on the extra point. It takes a little time, right? It is. <laughs> it takes a little time. <laughs> well, you just said that Boise State was pinned, and Oregon State has a chance to maybe make some plays in the very first snap. They give him five yards to help him give him a little breathing room. Yeah, that was uh, Kevin Fran. Doug Martin is the big back here. Great play action by Kellen Moore. Incomplete out of bounds and third member of our team Aaron Andrews is here and Aaron what was pregame like with Boise State? Well with five minutes left in that Alabama Arkansas game Brent both teams were out on the field practicing well the Broncos not a lot of them were out on the field actually I caught up with them after Alabama was able to pull off that win in Fayetteville and I asked Kellen Moore hey did you have the Arkansas game on he smiled very big and said no what happened Chris Peterson did tell me yes they were watching <laughs> and it doesn't matter who won who do you guys play <laughs> I think they were pretty dialed in second and five here's Martin short of the first down White and Roberson, and do we have another flag? Yes, we do. <laughs> Throw it right, usually we're there. Going to be a hold possibly here on Boise State. Holding. Offense, number 59. Half the distance to the goal. Will Lawrence gets caught here, and you know, Oregon State, they had a, a, a big theme this week about coming into this environment and, and how tough it is to play Boise State on the blue turf. And it was really about being in attack mode all week long. They got attention for painting their practice field blue, but really Mike Riley telling us last night it's been about being in an attack mode on both sides of the football. This is a good chance for them to try to live up to what they've been talking about all week. Battling his way out is Martin, and he is stoned by that Beaver defensive front. Tuimane, the senior from Hawaii up there to help out. And we just talked about that kind of being in that attack mode and coming downhill and those linebackers that have been very very criticized in Corvallis about their poor performance and what they've done in their first two games that time coming down and Brent we would love the backs on this team led by Doug Martin and for you to hit him at the line of scrimmage like that you know that Oregon State was really coming after him locked in back in that passing formation. Steps up, hits the underneath man. That is Pettis, who threw the touchdown pass, and he is short of the first down. That will force Boise to punt, and this should give the Beavers. Hold on, they're moving. It was a first down. I didn't they, think he had. Yeah, they got a favorable spot there, and they're going to move the move the sticks. And the precision of this passing game, built around the timing and rhythm of not just Kellen Moore, but also you can see Pettis here. Boy, they gave him I'm a very, that. Yeah, very favorable spot. First down and 10. That's a fun. Is that lateral? Out of bounds. 
And that will maintain possession for Boise State. Live ball. It's a lateral. Something to watch throughout this game. And we'll take a look at this. This is a great view. You can see it's definitely a lateral. I'm trying to catch uh, this Oregon State defense off guard. But Lance Mitchell right there, the safety. Even if Pettis made that catch, he had Mitchell, probably the best defender on this Oregon State defense on the back end anyway, there to be able to make a play. But Oregon State has had a hard time this year on third downs. Really one of the worst in the entire country. They have a hard time getting off the field. And so far tonight, Boise State three for three on their third down chances. D.J. Harper, the speed back, is back in. Option to Harper. Got a piece of the corner, but couldn't do much because of Lance Mitchell, the 6'2", 207-pound junior. Wilson sets up another third down. And you can see 116th in the country, 56% of the time. Their opponent is converting, and a lot of those Brent, if you look back and think of the film, what we saw with Andy Dalton, sometimes quarterback scrambles from Dalton, sometimes just having the chance at third and three to be able to scramble and make a play. From Andy Froman from Louisville making plays with his feet. So I don't think Kellen Moore has that kind of threat on third down, but they are three for three so far tonight. Needs eight here. Gets it off. Incomplete. Forced to punt. Now they got some pressure on him there, but that was a matchup that Kellen Moore will take every single time with Pettis matched up against Cameron Collins, a linebacker. But give credit to the guys up front because Paya, 54, got in there. The experience gave Miller the speed of the front four from Oregon State that time. Got to Kellen Moore just in time before he was able to find that matchup with Pettis against Cameron Collins. Now we're going to see the all-purpose wonder of the Beavers. James Rogers is standing just on the other side of the 50. Kyle Boxman. Try to corral him at number eight. Going to bring it across the field. Looking for a lane. Got one. Needs a block. Cuts inside. Needs one more. Headed for the end zone. What a return. Touchdown. 53 yards. Folks, he's magical on the return. Woo! This is what can happen with one of the best return men in the country. Brent, you were calling it and saying he just needs a crease. Just somebody give him a crease. He's able to find it and then for patience down the sideline, allowing the convoy to have enough time to get in front of him. He picks a couple blocks at about the 20-yard line up and into the end zone, and that's what you needed from Oregon State early in this game to change the complexion around playing on the road in this hostile environment. Justin Kehu adds the extra point. Brian Watkins does a really good job here, Brent, of more than anything, just not coming up and making the block. 38 right there de declines. It kind of holds back. And if he made that block, obviously it's a push in the back, and then the rest of this doesn't happen. But a great decision to let off of that block, potentially, and avoid that clip with a push in the back. Look at his total yardage. And now, here comes Boise, and it will be Titus Young. Slips on the brand new carpet this year, and he is out of bounds on the far side. See how Kellen Moore responds to that big return. Is DJ Harper in the backfield? And they'll try to run the ball a little bit right of the arms of Ruben Robinson, pushing the Mike linebacker or the middle band back a little bit. As much as Boise State has come out in this game and thrown a lot of the time with, with Kellen Moore off play action, you know, th this entire offense is predicated upon being physical up front with an experienced offensive line and then the running of Doug Martin and D.J. Harper, and then they typically like to mix in some double moves to the play action and get the, throw, the ball thrown downfield, but it's all based off being physical up front. Second and two, Harper. Picks up the first down, and he slips too. Could wind up being a story on a brand new turf, and he's limping a little bit. He once blew out a knee, and he was sidelined, and he goes back over there for a little attention right now. 
right towards the end there. You always worry about that, whether it's blue turf or green turf. That, oh, boy, those are scary. Luckily, he's able to, to get off the field, and hopefully he'll be able to return. Keep an eye on that story. Martin checks back in. They also have a third back in Jeremy Avery. Movement, and they will stop it. They will whistle this dead. That may have been on the receiver from Boise State up at the top of the screen. False start, number 82. Five-yard penalty, first down. That was Geraldo Highwatt was guilty there, and let's check in down below with Aaron. Brent, you mentioned the field, guys slipping. When you walk on it, and that's what I'm doing right now, it's still pretty lumpy. There's some good bumps in it. It hasn't really settled at all. You could pretty much trip over an area that just hasn't really sunk into the ground at all. Interesting, because those of you who've watched this field before, remember how shiny it used to look? Well, this one's not nearly as shiny as Cullen completes it to the outside, and they gang up on Young. And there is the medical attention, and that is a story with D.J. Harper down there on the sideline. He blew it out against Fresno State a year ago, and he's the fastest of their running backs. And also, because he and Doug Martin are interchangeable, they're so similar with how physical they are, and then they like to throw in Jerry, Jeremy Avery, more of a scat back, but uh, it would be a tough loss to lose D.J. Harper. Second and ten. Kellen Moore showing escape ability and then throws it out of bounds. But let me show you what, what I mean. And uh, many of you remember when we used to tune in for the late game involving Boise State, you might have thought it was raining out there because it was kind of shiny and that was the turf. And they came in and I think it was about $800,000 to install this new turf. And this one does look much better on television. I will tell you that. But when you're here in person, Kirby, it is blue. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, and, and some of the opposing coaches feel that the blue matches the blue uniforms and that this team is hiding no over the question. <laughs> Third and ten. Swing and a beautiful catch by Young. And how about that throw, Herbie? Oh, that, that is an amazing throw right over the shoulder of his receiver, Titus Young, and he got a matchup that he loved, Jordan, Jordan Poyer, who's a safety in a corner, all by himself on an island. This is going to be one of the key matchups tonight. Can Oregon State, when they bring, bring pressure, hold up in one-on-one -on -one coverage? And he gets just enough time. He gives a little shoulder fake to try to keep the safety to the middle of the field, and he just lays it right over the shoulder of Titus Young. Perfect throw. I gotta tell you, and Poyer with pretty good coverage on that play. He was right there. He was. And they come back now uh, with the running play on first down. So Harper, we are told, is back up and seems ready to come back into the game when they need him. So that's good news for the sideline. There he is with the helmet on. Pettis up to the top of the screen. Again, the guy that they love to go to along with the tight ends in this area. Martin battering ahead. It's going to be tough sledding, I think, tonight for Doug Martin and, and uh, for D.J. Harper against this Oregon State defense. The defensive line, you know, Stephen Paya, 54, gets most of the attention, and he's one of the top defensive tackles in the country, probably a future first-rounder. But Taylor Henry does a nice job off the edge. Brendan o Olander, another defensive tackle, holding up okay. Gabe Miller is an experienced defensive end, 99. I tell you, all four of these guys are playing pretty well and trying to defend this physical running attack from Boise State. Masan Iyai is in the middle of that as a as a nose guard. So as John Saunders told you earlier in the pregame show, it was a wild and woolly day. I think the lead story has got to be that Texas loses, and that's Rick Neuheisel's 
easily his uh, definitive game as, as head coach at, at UCLA. That was the biggest victory that Rick has had since he became head coach of the Bruins. Really a, a big opportunity with UCLA beating Houston last week. And a lot of people said, well, it was Houston. Uh, but but the way they played today, that was more UCLA winning and not so much Texas losing. Texas has their issues as they get ready for Oklahoma. They can't run the football. But it was impressive to see the Bruins on the road and good for Rick to win that big game. Texas may have been peaking a little Could've bit been. at Oklahoma. I'll tell you, that offense has been struggling all year, and this is the first time they played athletes good enough to expose them. They can't run the football. They weren't doing much in their passing game. It's, it, it going up against Oklahoma's skill next week, defensively, that's going to be a real challenge for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Third and four. Kellen looking back to the right. Complete for a first and goal inside the five to Kyle Efaw. Again, good patience here, buying as much time as he can. And, you know, the one thing that, he, that was key is the pass protection. Efolf is able to find the seam and eventually break free. But Kellen Moore hung in there as long as he possibly could until finally Glover, the defensive end, got to him. How about cool hand Kellen? He is hard to sack, knows how to step away from pressure. No doubt. He's tough to deal with. And this presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. As we start the second quarter, deadlocked at 7 with Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brent Musburger. I know some of you are just getting home from your games. Oregon State won the flip here where we are, and they had to punt it away. And Boise State marched right down for the first touchdown of the game. Then James Rogers electrified this crowd with a 54-yard punt return touchdown. Now the ninth play of this drive is coming up. And here comes Boise State trying to haul it in, and the running back is powerful Doug Martin. He is smacked. Man, they're, they're playing out there. I mean, Oregon State, considering the way this game is, is gone, could be down by a lot more, but they're showing a lot of fight. Remember, their theme is about playing and kind of taking the fight to Boise State. Now, they may give up a touchdown here, but I'll tell you what, they're, they're being a lot more physical in this game than anything that they've shown in their first two games against TCU and Louisville. Now you got to watch the play action here. Fake it up the middle to Martin, throw to the backside, back line to the tight end. There's the play action. Kellen comes up, looking receiver, drops it off, incomplete. And Dan Paul, the fullback, was looking for a flag, and they picked him up coming out of the backfield. Brandon Harden was on top of him. Uh, the backside tight end is actually right here. He's going to try to get to the back line, and that's one of the things that Kellen Moore does. Typically, he waits his time and eventually likes to find the man that eventually that has a chance to get open. Efall is covered, flat out covered, so he tries to go to the tight end, the fullback in the flat ball. Nobody there. He has to just throw it away. Threw a couple of touchdown passes to Paul with this play. And now Joe Southwick checks in. He's a runner. Here he comes. And he's throwing for a loss. A beautiful tackle by Brennan Olander, the senior from Grants Pass, Oregon. One time a walk on. He didn't walk on this play. No, he's got great quickness. And he's able to fight through there. Again, keep talking about this, this front four and everything that they have an ability to do. And that's all about speed, quickness, and acceleration. It's a pretty athletic quarterback in there trying to run away from him, and he chased him down from the backside. So they will settle for a Bronxman field goal from the left hash. This has been his bugaboo, 21 yards on its way, and he nails that one. We welcome you back to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Good news for the Broncos. DJ Harper is back on the field. Here's Kellen Moore, the young man from Prosser, Washington. Firing complete. And I can hear the applause from Prosser. Play action and it going. Shaken free. First man could not bring him down. Fires complete. And that's Austin Pettis. But how about the way, and let's hear it up in Prosser, Kellen Moore 
shook the defender, Brandon Harden, who was coming with a blitz. He comes with a blitz right off of the defense, off the edge there. Really catches more, I think, in the offense off guard. But a great job by Kellen Moore, not just escaping and showing some strength to get away from Harden, but what I love to see is he focuses downfield, sets his feet quickly, and then throws an accurate ball downfield to where only his guy can make the catch. 26-yard game. Boise State back at midfield, leading it by three. Down the sideline and caught one-handed by Titus Young. Brent, the multiple wide receiver formations are starting to expose Oregon State in space, and Harden is a big physical corner at 6'2", 215. He's actually in pretty good position, much like earlier Jordan Poyer was. But the ball placement, which was a big emphasis of this quarterback, Kellen Moore, coming back this year, put it right where only his man could make that one-handed grab. Young with four catches for 87 yards. Moore has thrown already for 168 yards. And he's looking for more. Touchdown! Austin Pettis caught it going in. And Austin Pettis has just scored his fourth touchdown as a receiver. Remember, he also threw a touchdown pass earlier tonight. Brent, that's Oregon. That is that is Boise State's offense in a nutshell. Four plays, 81 yards, and Kellen Moore putting on a clinic on how to distribute the football to different receivers and the accuracy to go along with it. How about that throw right there to Austin Pettis? Kyle Bronsman. Knocks it through. This is a great look at the anticipation from Kellen Moore with his receiver, Austin Pettis. Watch when he releases the ball, and look at the, the receiver, Pettis. His head right now just focusing on coming down to the football. The ball's already out of the hands of Kellen Moore. The timing, the anticipation, the hours that Pettis and Moore have been able to work together over the years, right there is exactly what makes Kellen Moore such a great quarterback. Trevor Harmon kicking off. They rest Kyle Bronsman. He kicks off, punts, kicks extra points. Fielded now by Poyer as they continue to kick away from Rogers. Poyer with an alley. Cuts back and he is near midfield. So Trevor Harmon, who is kicking off here tonight, comes up and makes a big tackle, but it is a 40-yard return. Watch it. Watch this young man. Love to see the kickers in open field, and you just hope, you hope that they catch a shoestring or an ankle. Good job there, my man. Absolutely. So now Ryan Katz comes out. His team down 10. Of course, Bronsman will really be missed by Boise State next year, and there's a young man who's going to get a good look. Fire complete. Right into the middle, and that was Halahuni, Herbie. Halahuni lined up as a tight end here and just comes right down the seam of this defense right towards you at home. And when you do this, you got to be able to throw it again on a line. That's the second time we've seen tonight Ryan Katz and his arm strength where he makes a quick decision, he locks in on who he wants to make the throw to, but he has the arm strength to be able to throw it in there with the velocity where his guy makes the catch and then he gets down and gets ready to get hit. We saw the replay. Jamar Taylor unloaded on it. First down and 10. Fake to the outside and back to quiz. Well, it's time now, and I've got this is a two part question. Herbie's going to get a bonus part of this, folks. As you know, that away, Doug. Boise State, and he loves the blue field. He thinks it's water out there. 71 and 2 since 99. Who did they lose to? Now, Herbie knows, okay? I know he knows. So, know. Herbie, here's the bonus. Who were the two quarterbacks who came in here and won games? You get a bonus part of this question. Okay. That yeah. is our athletic trivia question. <laughs> yes, indeed. I got, I got my ace thinking a little bit on this one now. Certainly not giving up on the running game here. No, they're not. And, and I think you're starting to see that balance 
I think that, again, that, that offensive line is getting a push, but I think that the thing that Oregon State's going to have to try to avoid are these third down and long situations. Because they've struggled, I don't think they have the confidence coming into this game, and it's one of those things that they have to be able to get in those third and threes, third and five situations. They're one of four tonight on third down. against the run at that Mike linebacker. Darrell Acree comes in this time also. You can see first the defensive lineman, Billy Wynn, gets a hand on it. The ball starts to flutter, and then Acree also got a hand on it and knocked it down. That time, Cats trying to force it into some tight coverage. Justin Cahoot. A 41-yarder. Got it. Pull back to within seven. Oregon State hanging in in Boise. Here comes Young. Coming out from the corner. And he is brought down. So let's go back to our Aflac question. This Aflac. Gotti record on the blue. Well, Who did we, they lose we were to? We're talking about Boston College, Washington State. Right. I'm going to guess Jason Gesser and Brian St. Pierre. Just two guesses. Uh, I thought you'd get the other one. Gesser's a good guess. Okay. He and Washington State came in here with Coach Mike Price. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. It almost seemed too obvious. Boston, exactly. That's a good one. Okay. How about St. Pierre though? No, I, was, I like the name. Right. You that did. I thought one. that was excellent. Good going. <laughs> Here's Doug Martin. They started off on first down, and what a powerful looking running back. Gives him second and short. He's a great young back for fans to watch and for young players to emulate. I mean, think about him growing up. He's 5'9 and about 212 pounds. I say young back, he's a junior, but I love to see, we went to practice yesterday, he's just one of these guys that he just has one speed. Everything he, that he does, he does at full speed. And he's been questioned his whole life, does he have the size, the durability, the speed, and all he does is outwork everybody else to get his opportunity, and he runs with passion. And swinging. First and ten. Matt Kaiserman, a sophomore running back. He snuck one in on us there. But, you know, the one thing that Moore's been able to do, the adjustment, I think, that Brian Harson's made, the offensive coordinator, multiple wide receivers, and then getting one-on-one -on -one opportunities to try to pick on the safeties in the corners. There's been some good coverage, but the accuracy of Kellen Moore has been the difference tonight on the big plays. In fact, they're five of six on pass plays of 15 yards or more. So very accurate downfield tonight. Martin slips back onto the field. And they'll swing pass to him. Had a wall, and he's out to the 46 for a first down. And here's your number three team in the nation, Boise State. And I know some of the coaches have returned home from their games, and they've got the television turned on. And there's taking a look at this this Boise State team. Who are these guys and how good are they? The other one victory has been devalued a little bit everybody says because Virginia Tech the next week lost to James Madison. Sometimes those FCS schools can fool you a little bit. Just ask those Michigan fellows about Appalachian State that night. And Montana State pushed Washington State to the wall earlier this year in the fourth quarter. So there's some really good football players in the FCS. Play action now by Kellen Moore. Moore going downfield. Oh, wide opening of back in. Titus Young. 49, and folks, that's too easy. 
Brian Harden is stating his case as a corner, saying that he stepped out of bounds. I think he was forced out of bounds. Again, Harden isolated one-on-one, -on -one, a little out and go, and he goes out of bounds, but he works his way back onto the field. Harden almost gave up on the play, and you'd see him pointing there, but Titus Young got pushed out of bounds by Harden on that out cut, a little out and up, and Harden just trying to state his case, but clearly Titus Young was forced out of bounds. And here's Kyle Botsman. Tacks on the extra point. Do they love this football team? Harmon Killebrew is here tonight, Idaho native, and back in the days when this was a junior college, they recruited Harmon and his brother as football players. But the Minnesota Twins are forever grateful that he chose baseball. And Harmon, who still works some for the Twins, couldn't be happier about his organization. He's a huge Boise State fan with us here tonight. That's out of bounds. And here comes James Rogers. Oregon State is thinking Oregon State is thinking points 24 to 10 323 to go They've built a little bit of momentum I think here the last few possessions that they've had and I think they're just kind of hanging around and, and I think this drive down 14 right now before they get to halftime Especially since they took the ball to start the game and Boise State gets the ball to start the second half I think It's important here to try to get some points and be aggressive Here's Quiz trying to stretch the defense. Picks up the first down into Boise State territory. On the field before the game, looking at Quiz up close and, and looking at his, his physique, I thought, boy, he's really put on some weight. I think he, Mike Riley was telling me before the game, he's probably put on 10 to 12 pounds of pure muscle. He's become more physical. And you can see the way he's running tonight when he gets to those linebackers, getting much like Doug Martin. He's running through some of those arm tackles. a chance again and he's wrestled down we look at the Associated Press top 10 the ESPN drive to the national championship Alabama and Ohio State both winners TCU was winner Friday night against SMU Oregon plays Arizona State a little bit later Texas obviously is going to be falling and so too will Arkansas question is whether or not the Longhorns will fall completely out of the top 10 they might we'll have to wait and see how that turns out Second and seven. Quiz flares safety valve back into the middle and beautiful to Halahuni. Now there is Ryan Katz learning how to come off his primary and pick up a secondary. Herbie, you've been Absolutely. talking about that. And this time they use Rodgers actually out of the backfield as a decoy off to the left. He's trying to get the attention of the defense. He's raising his left hand, trying to draw the linebackers to him, to the defense, his right, to the offense, his left. And then he comes back to Halahuni, who picks up some good yards. Well-designed play there by the Beavers. Deflected again. That was hit by Venable. Winston Venable, one of the leaders, one of the vocal leaders of this defense, a senior from San Rafael, California. Yep, comes on the blitz that time, gets his hands up. Great athlete. We've seen him now play not only this game, but the opener against Virginia Tech. An emotional leader, kind of the spark plug of this defense. Really a hard worker. And that time he was very instinctive, getting his hands up and knocking that ball down. Texas had a couple of balls deflected here in the second quarter. Second and ten. Steps away from the pressure. Going to keep it. Can he get the first down? Yes, he does. That was a fine run by Ryan Katz. Clock will stop briefly. They've got 114 and all three timeouts. Yeah, very important here, obviously, as you get down close to the half. Make a good decision. You're in field goal range. Young quarterback, is he going to force the throw? And this is where Katz is going to try to grow and evolve as a young guy. 
does a good job here, not just being willing to just pick up a few yards, but accelerating and then getting across there for the first down. Great awareness. Three receivers at the top of your screen, including James Rogers. Katz fires back, middle high, incomplete. Halahuni, the target. Locked into Halahuni there, who's had a lot of success in his career, latter part of last year, down in the red zone. He's made some plays, and he's got good size. Time the linebacker, J.C. Percy, had backed up far enough and was able to they get in the way of that throw and affected the vision that time of Katz and Halahuni. Jordan Bishop and James Rogers off to the left. And now the line judge says that a timeout's been called by Riley yep. and the Beavers. Oregon State, first charge, timeout. Fired him up. Oregon State takes a timeout. A little frustration there, I think, and some confusion. I think you could hear him say, what was the call? Meaning, why are you lined up where you lined up? And thankfully, they had a few timeouts in the bank, and they still have two left, 48 seconds to go with the ball at the 13-yard line on second and 10. So still plenty of time, and those timeouts will help them. In underneath, and Quiz didn't get out of bounds. Tried to pick up some yardage there instead of stopping it. Of course, they do have a couple of timeouts remaining. He was battling. Johnson is there. You said second time out here, third down. Of course, anytime you can get the ball in the hands of James or Quiz Rogers in space, I think that's that's something that this offense is trying to make more and more a priority. If there's been any criticism of all of, of Cats this year, it's been holding on to the ball and trying to always drive the ball downfield and having that confidence in the big arm. They want to see him just drop it down to James and especially uh, Jack Quiz Rogers going one on one against a linebacker in space. So the ball is on the eight yard line. They've got a third and five and 34 seconds. They would love to have the offense put a touchdown up. Their only touchdown, in case you just joined us, is a punt return by number eight, James Rogers. But Mike would have to settle for a field goal, you would think, in this situation, if he doesn't make it here, if they come up yeah. with a fourth down from where they are. They can get a first down at the three. So here we go. Which is in tight on the right. He's number 87. Cats. Got to take off. Got to throw it. It's in zone. Jump ball incomplete. Here's your fourth down. See Johnson back there. Along with Iloka. Where Ryan Katz was very, very fortunate. Iloka gets up to knock that ball down. But I thought Johnson in front of the receiver, the attendant receiver, I thought he might be able to go up there and maybe have a shot at an interception. So the field goal unit comes onto the field. Justin Cahoot, the senior from Portland. This is a 25 yard. No way to end the first half. Well, they did a great job, Ren, moving into the ball down in the position, getting into the red zone. You're thinking that, hey, this offense all year, when they get in the red zone, they get points, and he just pushes it to the right there. Hit it pretty clean. He just missed it to the right. But, you know, Ryan Katz in that offense moved the ball down the field, and just getting points, you talked about it. Just getting it to 24 to 13, scoring before halftime, with Boise State taking the ball to start the third quarter. That would have been that would have been big. Yards, wide disparity, 282 total yards for Boise State to 125 for Oregon State. Let's go down now to Aaron Andrews with the coach. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, Oregon State, one of six on third down. What's been key in stopping them? Well, we've been getting a little bit of pressure there, making them throw it. I think the backers are getting in throwing lanes and doing a good job there. Where we're hurting ourselves is field position on special teams. We've got to take care of that. How do you take care of it? 
We got to get better kicks to start with. And then once we do get a good kick, we got to get the coverage down there. It's just a little bit of everything there. All right, coach. Thanks. Thank you. Brent. All right, Aaron. Three team in the nation with a two touchdown lead as we prepare to start the second half. And with Kirk Herb Street and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger. We welcome you back. And Boise State will have the ball to start. The yeah, half. they they get the ball and, and control the first half for the most part outside of the big return by James Rogers to kind of keep the Beavers in this game. But a lot of the first half was about Kellen Moore, a Heisman Trophy candidate. The play action pass tonight has been really big for him. And it's set up because of their ability to run the ball, makes Oregon State appreciate, respect that. He gets outside, he has plenty of time, and this is that big touchdown throw down the sideline to Titus Young. Breaks contain, plenty of time downfield, and then was able to get it downfield where Young got behind coverage for that big touchdown. And that was a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. And here comes Young. Sprinting and out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Titus Young in our Pacific Life game summary. Keller Moore is so hard to bring down. Coaches told us from Oregon State, you just can't get him on the ground. And that has been the case here tonight. And his two favorite targets, both are seniors. And he has gone to them frequently here. Oh, what a night for Titus Young. Couple, the one-handed catch, the big touchdown down the left sideline. 136 yards in the first half alone. And Pettis threw for a touchdown, don't forget. On first and 10. Bring it to Martin. And he picks up eight yards on first down. Really important for Oregon State to come out of the gate swinging because, as you know, Boise State is a four-quarter team, and they play with the same intensity in the third and fourth quarter as they do. They just There aren't any peaks and valleys when you play Boise, and Oregon State can't afford to take one series off, or this game could get out of hand in a hurry. Martin again, no first down. Good defensive play that time by Tony Wilson, the sophomore linebacker from Salem, Oregon. Tony Wilson with the ACL back last spring and kind of fought through a lot of rehab, put himself in a position to be a major contributor this year as only a sophomore. Those linebackers have been challenged against uh, Doug Martin and when DJ Harper's been in there running the football downhill right at him. For the most part, they've held up pretty strong against the run game. Rolls the pocket to the left and fires and it is complete again to Pettis. As you watch Kellen Moore and more and more people, if you will, are going to talk about this young man. Can he eventually play in the NFL? Is he too short? They say he is six feet. I've been around Drew Brees this year. He's very close to being as tall as Drew. And what reminded me, Kirk, is that rolling out to the left, which is what Brees does so well with the New Orleans Saints, get himself passing lanes and stepping away. He's not one of those six foot five gunners. Same temperament as far as being a real gamer and a, and a student of the game at the college level when Drew was at Purdue. So he steps away from pressure. He feels it, throws deep, going to Young again. You know, the great thing about Kellen, is this offense is tough to prepare for. And Oregon State told us yesterday, the defensive coordinator, Mark Banker, said, you know, the confusion, the, the guys are coming in, the personnel groupings are constantly changing and evolving. So you try to match the personnel. What I like is once they, they bring in the different groups, then they break the huddle typically pretty quickly. They get to the line of scrimmage pretty quickly. And a lot of times, Kellen Moore with a, with a fast snap count, that keeps the defense really on its heels. Second down and 10. That's the screen. And nothing doing. It was read beautifully. There is a story, Herbie. You made a good point about how quickly they get the playoff. Now, you see that wristband? Mm -hmm. Those are numbers, and they signal it in because some of the plays at Boise State are very wordy. One obviously is hot. 
And I think it's pretty easy to figure out which one is calling the play over there. But at any rate, that's why Oregon State only uses one. But then he looks down at the number and he quickly is able to set the play in the huddle. Absolutely. And, and it moves quickly. And right now they're a little bit slower tempo with a 14 point lead. But earlier in this game, it was moving fast, trying to get up to that line and catch Oregon State out of position. Again, stepping away from trouble, coming up, and a one-hopper incomplete. And you always hear coaches talking about pocket presence. And when you throw 39 touchdowns and three interceptions, you don't get sacked very often. You give the Lions some credit. But just a little thing like that, that isn't necessarily tremendous athletic ability. That's just an awareness stepping up away from the defender, Olander, and in a position where you can at least have a chance to make an accurate throw. If you just joined us, by far the most exciting play of the night was the lone Oregon State touchdown. James Rogers returned a punt 54 yards for the score. And he is back deep now to field this punt. And remember what the coach said to Aaron Andrews? Doesn't like the exchange of field position. Need better kicks. So they're going to run it over to the right. And they're just going to get it off, kick it away from him. And that'll set it down inside the 20. So the coach gets his wish. Sophomore quarterback Ryan Katz. Brings Oregon State to the line here for their first series in this second half. Down two touchdowns, and they have been bottled up by an underrated Boise State defense. Quiz turns loose from one man, but not the second. And let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Aaron, uh, Coach can't be happy about his offense. Well, Coach Riley always speaking with a smile despite how far he's down in the game, but he did say he wants his team to execute, make plays, be patient here. His evaluation for his quarterback, Ryan Katz, in the first half, Brett, he says he just needs to take a deep breath. He said he's going to go back and watch film on this game and say, gosh, I had some guys wide open, but he said he's very excited for this second half. Feels like he could go the Beavers' way. We'll have to see. Well, here is Katz facing a second and nine. Back in the pocket. There's that deep strike arm, and it is complete to Jordan Bishop. The track man, number 23, and that was a fine throw. Great throw. There's that strong arm again, and this is a, a route because it's a levels route that takes a lot of time to be able to develop. One receiver just clears out a defender. Another receiver is down underneath. You can see the receiver just clearing out to give the room there for this time Bishop to be able to operate. Aaron Nichols doing a good job of taking a safety deep and giving him an opening, and Ryan Katz, if he has time to throw, steps in and fires that ball. 27 yards, and now they jump into the Wildcat. And one brother hands it off to James. And Quiz is thrown down, and they, they thought that that should have been flagged for a personal foul over here on the sideline. I think they wanted either a face mask or a horse collar, one or the other. Oregon State pretty animated on the sideline. Grabs the side of his helmet. Grabs a hold of the back of the jersey and Oregon State with good reason to be upset. Second and ten. Now Katz will go back up under center. Alex Lennon Cole, senior from Olympia. Under fire throws complete. And that's to James Rogers, number eight, and another good throw. So Katz has a strong arm. There is no question about that, and he's delivered two good throws here. We were talking about Kellen Moore in the NFL, and always, you know, you, you want to see if guys have that NFL arm. Well, there's no question about Ryan Katz. I think he can make any throw on his field. And when these guys are giving him enough time to be able to get back, be in rhythm, and step and make a throw, I tell you, this guy has he's got all the goods. You can see how woeful they've been on third down. Here's another one. Play action. Cats roll to the right. He's got James covered in front of him. Can he get it as a runner? Cannot. Out of bounds. Fourth down. Wait a minute. He picked it up. He said he was not out. Hang on here. Chris Peterson was right over there. This was a fine play on the far side, Herbie. I thought he was bottled up, and uh, unfortunately, James Rogers is down right now. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting to look back at this. Let's keep a close eye on James Rogers, but 
Brent Katz comes over, and you, you're thinking he might throw it, decides to run. There's James Rogers at the top, gets pushed in the back. Jamar Taylor's fighting, and right here, he doesn't give up on the play. The only question is, did his right foot ever step out of bounds? Boy, James Rogers takes a big hit from Winston Venable. That side judge is right over there watching right now. He's from behind, taking a look at it. We will step away right now as James Rogers is down after that hit. Let's hope the young man's okay. We'll be right back. Block on Grove Street, downtown Boise. And there were a lot of Basque immigrants who came to this part of the country. A lot of shepherds moved here from Spain. And they're keeping the Basque culture alive in Boise. And James Rogers walked off under his own power. Good to see him. And now his brother is back in the wild beaver. Spins and can't get much. Uh, Oregon State's players have it. Throws him back and Quiz objects to how he was manhandled. That's Tevis, the linebacker, I believe. These Oregon State players off, off the field or on the bench are actually coming onto the field when he first went down. Yeah, and so they, coaches quickly jump out and get him back. Yeah, they almost cleared the bench there after the hit on James Rogers and then having Quiz taken down on that play but uh, the, the previous play where James got hurt he did walk off uh, while we were away at a, at a break and we did look at a good replay to show that Ryan Katz did stay in bounds there was no argument at all and great effort there to pick up that first down here is a look at it and it is a great shot right foot clearly stays in bounds then the left dives for the first down and a fine play by Katz and here he is with a second and ten Using Wheaton and Rod Katz is going to go for the home run ball. Double cover, incomplete. Went for the deep strike to Daryl Catchings, the junior from Escondido. When you lose James Rogers in the passing game, you're talking about a, a, a big part of this offense. And Wheaton is going to have to be the guy, Brent, I think, that's going to have to step up if James Rogers has to stay out. And they tried to find Darrell Catchings downfield with a big throw, but the timing just not there between Catchings, a young man that doesn't play much, and Ryan Katz. Katz slips the first one, but not the second. Ran back into more trouble as he scrambled away. And there is a penalty flag. Still a little bit woozy, folks. That was the one thing we noticed when he came out. No doubt. Unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting number 40 on the defense. 15 yards. We will look to see if it is first down. That is Tyrone Crawford, and that will incur the wrath of Chris Peterson. That's the sort of thing that he does not tolerate. Not at all. And Tevis, the linebacker, is going to come around and get the pressure. Confusion on the offensive line. You can see how they weren't able to slide over, and it looked like Burke Ellis, the right guard, that wasn't able to slide and pick him up. But what a break for Oregon State, not converting on third down. And I don't know if there was some That's words Crawford. exchanged. I, no it question looked, on that replay. Yeah. He was bent over and looking down, Herbie. Yes, sir. And he was bellowing at him. Won't like that. No way. That's how you get off the field in Boise. Yeah, absolutely. First down and ten. At the 31 yard line. Gonna set quiz on the short pass and Brian Byron Hout, the middle linebacker, comes up with a great play. Great vision by, by Byron Hout this time and sitting back in his own defense, head was on a swivel, and boy, did he just. Dropped it off. Quiz Rogers, usually very dangerous, isolated against those linebackers. Hout came down and didn't give him much of a chance. High and 
dropped incomplete. And that'll bring up another third down as Katz takes another hit. You know, it's interesting talking to the coaches, the Boise State coaches, and asking them, what do you think people think about the Boise State team? And they laugh, and they say to you, there's two versions. Fans think we're the, this gimmick team and a scoring machine. But if you talk to coaches now who work against them, like Mike Riley, they say this is a physical, physical football team. Blue-collar, hard-hitting, tenacious defense. And they have shown it here tonight. Third down and ten. Four-man rush. Katz runs away from it. Can he get to the marker this time? He cannot. Looks like he was trying to use the umpire as a shield, and another flag comes in late. Remember the last third down, Oregon State didn't convert, picked up the personal foul, and got the first down. Now another late flag comes in right where Katz went down. Personal foul, number 17. Unnecessary roughness in the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Seems like it's getting a little chippy out there. A little bit of taunting going back and forth. Venable was the man who hit James Rogers and knocked him out of the game. This time it looks like he's coming in a little bit late on Ryan Katz. Ryan Katz does a good job again, Brent, identifying that the linebackers cleared out, picks up as many yards as he can. And boy, Venable led with his head, but he didn't make contact. But he did lead with his head. But I don't think he hit him. I don't either. And there's no question he led with that helmet. First and ten. Here comes Quiz Rogers, slicing and dicing. Awfully tough to get yards down when you bring tight ends in and it's a real tight formation against Boise State. Much easier down in this red zone, of course, to spread them out with receivers and try to, to find quiz a little bit of a seam or some running room. But when you line up with a kind of a bunch formation, a goal line formation, you're, run, you're kind of running uphill against these blue jerseys. Steps away, takes off with that athletic ability across the five, but that'll bring up the third down, and they can get a first down without scoring here. And down two touchdowns, you would think that Mike Riley and the coaching staff here will go four downs in this situation to get the first down of the touchdown. Brent, remember when you mentioned Austin Pettis? Was he sat out after a touchdown? How about Winston Venable? Your leader on defense makes a mistake, late hit, leading with your head, big play, crucial point in the game, sit on the sideline. No nonsense. Here's your power look. Quiz shakes free. Touchdown. They had him. Iloka was there, and they could not bring him down. And James Rogers' brother goes into the end zone, and it is game on on the blue turf once again. All of a sudden, Oregon State has a little bit of confidence here in this second half. Here's the leg drive and the power of Jacquez Rogers. You know, last year he was quick, he was slippery, but I think you're seeing him break away from tackles, arm tackles, a lot more this year with that added 10 pounds. He is a strong, strong young man. Okay, who is a little shaky. Well, there is the most sought after trophy in all of college athletics, the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper to the winner of the BCS championship. Wouldn't Boise State love to get its hands on that? Oh, yes. Sitting number three. Alabama surviving. They'll stay number one. Ohio State rolling. With the kick. And here's the kickoff, and Titus Young takes it out of the end zone. Powerful return, man. And a penalty flag comes flying. Is this still another mistake on Boise State here tonight? Well, if there's one area that's been a, a hindrance to this program this year, it has been the penalties. Possibly their seventh penalty on the night. Holding number 27, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. And Martin breaks a tackle and breaks free. Crosses midfield. Still on his feet. Can't bring it down. Battling to the 25. 
What a powerful running back that young man is. Well, Brent, we've been talking about him all night, and this will give you an idea how physical he really can be in the open field when he has a chance to run downhill. Look at him, look at this safety, Lance Mitchell. Mitchell doesn't do a very good job, but it was good contact, but he didn't wrap up. And against Doug Martin, if you don't wrap up, his leg strength will allow him to bounce off. Looks like he ran out of bounds here, didn't he? It was very close. That is very close. Yeah, he definitely. They, too late now. They get another snap in. Jeremy Avery, number 27, quickly came from the sideline after that 55 yard run. And Kellen Moore and Chris Peterson, hurry up. Give us, snap that football. And again, a well coached team. That's exactly what you should do in that situation. Long run. We're looking at the exciting part. Maybe the sideline review is not quick enough. So it's a replay doesn't get a fair shot at it. Second down and 12. Coming around is Young on the end around. And he's shy of the 20 yard line. Boy, these two wide receivers, folks, Titus Young and Austin Pettis. And along with the running back, Doug Martin, they're giving all the NFL scouts who are next to us a big eyeful. Now, Doug is only a junior out of Stockton, the running back. You don't know what he would decide. Obviously, Pettis and Young are going to get a crack at the league as both are seniors. That's Titus. He's out of Los Angeles, and Pettis is right down the road to Anaheim. Third down and three. Before the snap. Both start offense, number 87, five yards, third down. It's their eighth penalty of the night. And it, it, that's, again, another way to drive any coach, but especially Chris Peterson, crazy. They average nine and a half penalties on the year coming into tonight. Now, he's objecting to that. He thinks that Gabe Linehan, one of his H-backs tight ends, was allowed to do that. When you see Chris arguing like that, he's got a point. Yeah. He didn't go after the player. So here we go now, third down. <laughs> Deflected away. And a penalty flag comes flying. Pettis, the intended target. Cameron Collins interfered with him. Very similar to the earlier pass interference call we saw in the end zone. The right arm, in this case, with Collins, came around Here's Pettis. Defense number five. Spot foul, automatic first down. Again, Collins is a safety who has moved to linebacker and in a nickel situation, pretty athletic in space, but he can't see it there. But his right hand locked on to Pettis, preventing him from having a chance to make that catch. There's the right arm right there, and he comes around. Again, good technique with the left hand, but you can't lay, you can't lean on a receiver and pull him in towards you. Matt Kaiserman back in as the running back. Second time we've seen him tonight. And that's Dwight Roberson making the defensive play. That almost had the look to it. Like he actually wanted to throw that football. Might be why he's been in there. Yeah, Kaiserman kind of, it might be a play they're setting up to come back to later. And I actually happened to watch Kellen Moore as he handed it off and what happened to him on the backside. He was all alone. Nobody followed him back to the backside. Maybe they come back to that play later on a throwback to Kellen Moore. Martin checks back in as a running back. Kellen fires middle. Tyler Shoemaker, the junior from nearby Meridian, Idaho. <laughs> the year's Bratzman. a two touchdown advantage for Boise State again. I'd like to So here they are bringing Wheaton in the James Rogers role right now. The young man has great speed. We don't know how sturdy he is as Brandon Thompson. 
makes the play. The, the, the angles that this defense take and the way they swarm to the football. You know, defenses work on this in practice all the time on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and they get tired of doing it. Then all of a sudden, you turn on a, the game film and you find out if they actually do it in the game. And Boise State's one of these defenses that every time they've got guys swarming to the football, taking great pursuit angles. You might be very surprised if Coach lets Tommy Smith, number 33, come back in the game after that incident. That's goes down low Wheaton goes to the ground to get it and it's ruled incomplete that he trapped the ball it looked like he got his hands under but maybe after the the ball actually got to him maybe it fell through it's close enough to take another look I would think Third and ten. Incomplete. Clearly that. Darrell catchings the target. I think that time Ryan Katz just felt the pressure closing in on him. He did, his line didn't give him much of a chance. And again, third down has has been a nightmare all year long for Oregon State. They've caught a couple of breaks in their last drive where there are penalties against Oregon State. But again, there's pressure. They brought the the blitz from the corner. Ooh. Gavins. Takes a big hit right when he followed through on that football. Oh, Gavin's went right over the top, Herbie, and just yep. raked him. That was accidental, obviously, but he really got into him with his feet. Young bobbles it, free ball. Oregon State's got it. They'd be down right there. So Rashad Reynolds, a corner from Los Angeles, California, comes up with a loose football. Special teams have been big tonight for Oregon State. Reynolds comes up here, gives Oregon State the football back. Just when it looked like Boise State might be taking com complete control of the game. Another costly mistake here. Remember the big return by James Rogers. There have been some plays where Oregon State's being dominated if you look at the offensive numbers. But there's little areas where they've been able to hang around. Now let's see if they can capitalize on this chance. Shorthanded without James Rogers. Out for the rest of the game. They send three receivers to the right. It's in Ryan Katz's hands. Can he make plays down the stretch? Here comes Quiz. No more than a yard into the teeth of that defense. Do they win again? Brad, you said that game falls into the hands of Ryan Katz because even with James Rogers sitting there on the sideline for the rest of this game it's still going to come down to Ryan Katz's ability to make some of those throws that we saw him make earlier Chris Rogers is not going to be able to do this alone running the football Katz has got to make some throws down the field to stretch Boise's defense Katz good athlete runs away from the pressure fires back to the middle got it stumbling fumbling touchdown Oregon State Joe Halahuni falls on the ball in the end zone and the Beavers are back again as Daryl Ketchings caught it and turned it loose rumbling fumbling stumbling Ketchings makes the catch but Teron Johnson he could have called a fair catch for the interception there he mistimed his jump and the ball just sailed right over top of him and fell into the hands of Ketchings. Okay, who tacks on the extra point? And there was movement in the line. A handoff. Gabe Miller making the play defensively and no penalty, so everybody was okay. Gabe Miller looks strange to me. It did. It looked like there definitely was a little bit of movement. Maybe they didn't quite cross the line, but I did see you know, Tony Wilson, the linebacker. Gabe Miller, you talked about crashing down. You know, Boise State came into this game averaging about 221 yards a game on the ground. Tonight they only have 109. Most of the damage again has been by Moore throwing the football when they get their defensive backs isolated one on one. Second and nine for Moore. Brings the end around. Young 
Puts it in his hands, and he's short of the first down. To Imane. Knocked him out of bounds before he could get the first down. And one way, if you're struggling to get yards in the middle, is you got to get it out on the perimeter. And Martin has not had a chance to get out there. Avery, Harper, when he's been in there, it's been more and more Titus Young on the, on the reverse to try to just get him out to make this Oregon State defense tackle in space, an area that coming into the game was really a problem. It's really, They've really struggled their first two weeks, but doing a much better job of pursuing and closing in on these ball carriers at Boy Boise State tonight. Jeremy Avery and Matt Kaiserman are now in the field. Kaiserman looked like he was going to throw, remember. But it'll be Kelling, and it's deflected incomplete. And there is a penalty flag. Injured. Holding. Player is Taylor Henry. Offense. Ten yard penalty, third down. That's Brunel Myers. So take a look now at number 64. As you can see, the, the injured man is Henry. Watch this now. Right tackle. Just reaches out with his right arm and just tries to lock on and gets a hold of that jersey. <laughs> Dwight Roberson trying to go right by him. The bear claw there from the right tackle, Myers. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now that's sort of interesting. That is fascinating because that's a very makeable field goal he just gave Boise State. He wants him to go for the field goal here. Not only that, so, I, don't, I don't know if he has confidence trying to defend Kellen Moore one more time on third down. But it is a definite. It's a 10-yard penalty. Yeah. And that would that would bring the ball back outside the 25-yard line. This is an interesting decision by uh, Oregon State. Bronsman is on the field. The holder is Austin Pettis, and remember the wide receiver has already thrown for a touchdown here tonight. But it's only a seven-point lead, so let's see what Chris Peterson wants to respond with. This will be a 33-yard field goal. This is his comfort zone, the right hash. He'll take the points. So Riley wanted it stuck on a 10 rather than gambling and making it 14 if he lost. Timeout. Here's Martin again. As you watch the game on the blue carpet, Gene Blamont, the athletic director, was his idea. So he was coming home and he went to the president. He said, I've got this crazy idea. I'd like to have a blue football field. I'd like to give us an identity. And the president told him, well, let me think about this for a while. And so Gene would go home and well, you know what he would do, folks? He would turn on his TV set to a baseball game and he would turn the tent, the tent control button, you know, until the green became blue. And he said, that doesn't look so bad after all. And as you look down on this field, you, you just have to wonder what would it look like if it was a green field as Martin barges for a tough first down here on the blue. Love, love how this kid runs the football and the power and the leg drive threat. Safeties come up and they almost wish they didn't come up to try to tackle him. Nice job up front too. That time Joe Kellogg came around and picked up a nice block and one of the first times really we've seen Martin get to that second level. Maybe the second time we've seen it tonight where he got to the second level with a little bit of momentum. So what do you coaches who both think out there now? Texas, you had Texas up there in the top five. They lose today. Alabama survives a scare. They get by with the W. Ohio State rolls. Oh, I just got word from our truck. Bill Vanell and Derek Mobley have told me that our TD can show you what it would look like green. How about that, huh? Well, it looks like the Miami Hurricanes. John Zippe is our outstanding TD. And look at how he paints that. Well, that's what the AD did to figure out whether or not the blue would look good. That's sign how off. he experimented, <laughs> okay? <laughs> now, are you aware that there's a red field in Washington? Yeah, we showed that this morning on game day. That's crazy. Eastern Turfors, Washington. Yeah. The Inferno. Field. Talk about your TV yeah. needing an adjustment. Well, whoever televises those games back to Missoula needs some different cameras on top. Nobody could see the game. Second down 
and eight. And here comes Martin again. And here we are. It all began with this field and Gene Blyback. I think it works here. I don't know about that. You're not buying the red yet? I'm not buying the red just quite yet. <laughs> Third down and two. You don't think the Buckeyes should no, go no. over it? To? Okay, no. And on the toss play. And Martin breaks it again. Down to the 20 yard line. Now, this is an interesting point in this game. It is an interesting time, and it is another example where Martin's able to run through one, two, three tackles and eventually be brought down as they continue to wear down Oregon State. These are the times that really try Chris Peterson. He's not a guy who likes to run up scores, likes to win the game and go on to the next game. Would just as soon that the polls and all these debates would go far, far away. But here he is now. He's up 10. He's got 416 to go. And you know that some of those coaches who went to bed early without watching the game will see the final score without watching it. Keeping it on the ground and bringing Young on that end of the round. What a big all-purpose night he has had. We came in raving about James Rogers, but it is Young who has turned in the all-purpose night here. And Martin has run for 138. Moore has thrown for 288. But Young has also rushed for 18, and he's caught 136 yards of passes. And he's returned several kickoffs and punts here tonight. Yeah, he's put on a show tonight. And you know, the first time we saw this team, we came in expecting Titus Young to be the guy. And of course, Austin Pettis ended up stealing the show that night against Virginia Tech. But no doubt about it, Titus Young showing us and, and all of America what he can do. Third and four. Avery came in short of the first down. Now here prior, comes the kicking unit, right? Brent, prior to that third down, it was, it was Austin Pettis stating his case from the middle of the field, trying to show the coaches what play to call to keep him in and call a pass play. And he's trying to state his case, and Chris Peterson just said, come off the field, we're running the ball here. And he just kind of looked dejected. But that goes, that's who, again, that's who Chris Peterson is. 30-yarder. Now Austin Pettis, who he was talking about, he's the holder. Puts it down for Bronsman who nails it. Hey, how about that? Two for two for the left hand. Great night for that young man tonight. Let's give him a round of applause, folks. 37-24. Here's the kickoff now in Oregon State. We'll field it. There is the young man, of course, there without James Rogers here tonight. And so Jordan Poyer has been the has been the key guy. As you look around the landscape, Herbie, I'm, I'm curious as to who's going to replace Texas in the kind of in the top five. Who, who do you think will climb in there now? Well, I, I had Oregon actually up pretty high last mm -hmm. week, and of course they're playing tonight against Arizona State. And Oklahoma is a team that, that is out there that a lot of people are high on, but you know, struggling again today against Cincinnati, Fine. Nebraska, another team from the Big 12, is a team that I think will continue to climb. Uh, so there, there's some teams, and it's interesting. The next couple weeks, I think it's really going to define itself and give you a better idea uh, of who those third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place teams are going to be in the BCS standings. Katz is sacked at the 22-yard line. You know, Herbie, you mentioned the conferences and the BCS rankings. Brad Edwards has come up with a formula for ranking AP poll 50% of the BCS computers that are going to be used 50%. And I want everybody to look long and hard at where he rates the conference that Boise State plays in, okay? Ahead of the ACC and the Big East. And I find that very, very interesting to complete in underneath as they move it down the field. And as you look ahead now, as they continue this, and you think about Boise State, they've got to go to Nevada. Absolutely. Late, and Nevada hung a 50 on California. No doubt about it. How about the Mountain West Conference ahead of the line? Exactly. So here they are in their hurry up. Incomplete. 
which brings up the point. That's Don't what, overlook TCU. That's, what I was, that's the reason I brought it up. TCU often gets forgotten about because Boise beat TCU in last year's Fiesta Bowl. Just looking at that, it's, I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. I mean, I, uh, the Mountain West Conference this year with BYU playing a freshman quarterback, I don't think they have the... Well, Utah, don't go to sleep on Utah. No, Utah's a good team. TCU, I think Air Force is a good team, but after that, it kind of drops off. Meanwhile, the Big East, yikes. Yes. Fourth and 12. There's nothing like blue heaven for Boise State. Venable back in the game. And the victory formation. Herbie mentioned it, so I want to take a look at the comparative schedules between Boise State and TCU. Now take a look at those two games. TCU has to go into Salt Lake to play Utah. Meanwhile, Boise State has to go to Reno to play Nevada. Now, on paper, on paper, those are two of the toughest games that those teams have ahead of them. And it is amazing that if Boise State slips, TCU could wind up very much in the thick of things for the BCS championship game. Harvey. And the one thing that I find interesting every in every conference is it's one thing to play these teams that you don't always see. But you get in the conference play, teams are a little bit more familiar scheming against your offense. And all of a sudden, that's where upsets are. Remember those years USC was dominant against everybody? They'd slip up to somebody in conference play. So that still can happen to a lot of teams in these next uh, next seven or eight, nine weeks. Two fine gentlemen right there. He's like having your youngster play for either of those men. Nice to see James Rogers. We hope he's going to be okay. That was a blow to Oregon State when they lost him. Here's his brother. And this talented Boise State team underrated their defense. 72 and 2 at home since 1999. Best in the FBS. Fear the blue. Another thing to look at with this is people compare BCS standings with TCU and Boise State. Remember, TCU already played Oregon State. Mm -hmm. Gave up 24. Actually, very similar numbers if you look at, uh, at, at the stats of this game compared to the night that TCU met, uh, met up with Oregon State and Arlington the opening night. Players on these two teams, there's a lot of friends and people who played with and competed against each other in high schools. And let's check in now with Aaron and the fine young quarterback of Boise State. Brent, thanks. Kellen, first of all, Coach Peterson told us yesterday, being on a national stage tonight, he didn't care about your team making a statement in terms of rankings. He just wanted you guys to play well. What did you want to prove tonight? Yeah, I think just come out with a lot of energy, a lot of just enjoy this thing and have fun, uh, you know, play well out in front of the national stage. How do you guys think you played? I think we played pretty well. That was a good team. Uh, you know, they played neck and neck with TCU right early in the season, and uh, they're a good football team. I got some good players. Kirk was talking all night that you were just kind of putting on a clinic, the way you were able to distribute the ball all night. What was key in doing that? I think it's nice when you have good wide receivers like I do, so they make me look good. And talk about the time. It seems like you had so much time out there. Why? Yeah, awesome job by the offense line. Recognize when they blitz and when they don't, they do a great job of holding up. All right, Kellen, thank you so much. Right, thanks, Ann. All right, Brent. All right, Ann, thank you very much. So, Kellen.